Hi, I, I want to thank you for watching this course so far. Um, in this video, I will refactor the code, make it prettier and comment it out. So feel free to skip it if you want to, or welcome aboard if you want to organize your code. I will speed up uh, this video because it will take some time and in the most part it's just me writing some comments or tabbing the existing ones. So Let's start then by the data segment. We can tap this out with everything on the same column. This will be the initial X and Y positions of the ball. And this will be the current positions. These variables are the current X and Y position of the pedals. For the right one now, and now the width, height, and velocity of the pedals. Default pedal width, default pedal height, and finally the pedal velocity. You can already see that the code is easier to read now. So we can tap this out. This will be to clear the screen. If you don't remember, this will set again the video mode. Clearing the screen, uh, we can comment this. Clear the screen by resetting, starting video mode. Let's tap this out again. So this will be called on the beginning of the game, mostly to set the initial video mode configuration. So set the initial video mode configuration. As you remember, the check time label is the time loop of the game. If not, update time. And remember that if we reach this point is because the current time is not equal to the saved one and it means that the time has passed. If so, we update the time, we clear the screen by restarting the video mode, we move the ball before drawing it and after that we move the two pedals after, of course, checking for the key presses and draw and draw the pedals with the updated positions. After all this, we check for time again and now the move ball procedure. Here we are just processing the ball movement and to do this we move the ball horizontally and check if it has passed the top boundary. So the top boundary, don't forget, the left boundary, don't forget that is the ball X, um, the, I'm sorry, the zero plus window bounds. And 
If it's colliding, we just restart its position. We are comparing the ball X with the AX, that is the zero plus window bound, so the window bound, the left boundary. And if it's less, we jump to the reset position label. The same is done for the right boundary, so this time we compare the ball X position with the window width minus the ball size minus the window bounds, and if it's greater, we jump to the reset position label. After this, we move the ball vertically. So let's copy this, put it right here, and we move the ball vertically and we check if the ball has passed the top boundary. If it has, we reverse its direction, or better, the velocity in Y. We, we do exactly the same for the bottom boundary. Let's copy this. And again, we reverse the Y velocity. And down here, if it's greater, we reverse the velocity in Y again. Here, we are comparing with the bottom boundary. So, this time, we are comparing with the window height minus the ball size minus the window bounds. So this label, label reset position, we'll call the procedure reset ball position, that resets the ball position to the center of the screen. And the negate velocity y will negate the ball velocity y variable. So let's refactor now the move pedals procedure. And this procedure will process the movement of the pedals, as the name say. And I will left the rest of the refactoring on this procedure for when we are done with the collision implementation. We can refactor this now. This will restart the ball to the center of the screen, to the original position values. And let's tap all this out on this procedure. This will draw the ball, as the name say. Let's tap this out. And let's stop this procedure too. So I guess it's all ready now. Um, I will be back with more refactoring after implementing the collision between the ball and the pedals. But for now, I hope that your code is easier to understand and read with all these comments. So I will see you on the next video.